Late life, late movement up in the zone. Three different planes with the rise ball. And starting things off, Denver Bryant, the senior out of Albany, Georgia. Her numbers during SEC play have risen beyond her season batting average, close to 300 in conference games. And we saw South Carolina put up six runs in the opening game against the Gators. Coming up short, however, they answered back in a resounding fashion as that's through the five, six hole and the base hit to lead off the game for the Gamecocks. Third hit of the weekend for Denver Bryant. And the Gamecocks second baseman stands at first with Riley Blampede coming up to bat. Blampede, a couple of hits over the weekend. Had an even 300 average on the season. South Carolina has totaled 30 wins on the season, six in SEC play. And an important series for them because this is the time that head coach Bev Smith believes that they can catch fire much like they did last year in route to the SEC tournament final. Ahead of that one, swings through, and it's now a one two count to Blampede. Bev Smith in her 14th season in Columbia. And they've picked up now four ranked wins on the season. And that big one yesterday in the upset against the Gators. Well, right there, the throw down to first base. Denver Bryant taking off, steals second, and now in scoring position. So Jocelyn Erickson was trying to catch Denver Bryant, but she just took off. You like the decision for Jocelyn Erickson to try and make a bite here, but how about the heads up base running from Denver Bryant? You know in a scouting report that you're gonna see a left-handed catcher try and take a bite at first base. Middle line in left field. And the throw in time. Corby Otis gets Denver Bryant, who was trying to tag up from second base. So just as you gave her props right there, testing the arm of Corby Otis, and she says, uh-uh, no ma'am. Well, in one breath, the aggressiveness is awarded, but now for Denver Bryant trying to tag up and take an extra 60 feet. You know, off the bat, Tiffany, you think this ball's deep enough. You think this ball is deep enough with Corby Otis in left field, but she's got a hose. You've got to catch it, you've got to throw it, you've got to catch it again and make a perfect tag in Florida with the spot on relay for the double play. So instead of a runner in scoring position, two outs now with Zoe Leno at the plate. Leno, one of those home run hitters from yesterday. And one of two batters coming from the left side for the Gamecocks. Well, Roth Rock, who has come into this program. You've got three freshmen, another newcomer in the program as well. No innings pitch return for the Gators, and Roth Rock has helped to shoulder a good bit of the load. We've already seen the, the danger of that rise ball, the big swing through from Riley Blampede, second at bat. She climbs the ladder so well with that pitch. This one hit in the center field. Coming in to get it is Kendra Falby, and the inning is over. So the Gators will come up in better than 91 innings thrown this year. And the freshman stands in as Kendra Falby leads it off for the Gators. Falby, who had a couple of hits in Saturday's game. 
fell just below 400 in average, but you look at SEC play in this Gator lineup, five of the top seven in SEC in terms of batting average belong to the Gators. Good look there at Tim Walton, the head coach of this Florida group. I like the decision here from Bev Smith, South Carolina, choosing to go back to the arm of Marjeko, the freshman arm, second most innings behind Vodder, the senior leader on the staff. Marjeko struggled in game one, four walks out of the 10 that South Carolina pitching staff awarded Florida. And they took the game one loss. And immediately when I saw this call, when she's getting the starting job here, you've got to imagine that this is to make a wrong right, to come out with another opportunity and be sharper. And just getting to know this arm and talking to Coach Bev Smith about what type of arm this freshman is. She's elite and she wants to be elite. She's not scared to go for what she wants. High chopper along the left side, and Kendra Falby who runs it out. That's what she has done exceptionally well throughout her career in utilizing the infield and her speed to get to first. And oftentimes, you find Kendra Falby getting on base. And Corby Otis, who has had herself a very good weekend, and really it was shine throughout conference play for the Gators. Otis, a new addition to this group. Among the transfers coming over for Tim Walton. Began her career at Louisville. It was a first team all ACC selection. What a weekend she's had. Mm -hmm. Almost hitting 600 against the Gamecocks, four RBIs. To no surprise, right? One of the hardest workers on this team, Tim Walton just raves about her ability to prepare herself, the work ethic. This is a team that rallies behind this athlete. And it's sometimes it kind of works against her. She, she, is such a perfectionist of her craft that even Coach Walton has had to just release that pressure on herself that, hey, the adjustment isn't always necessary. Sometimes I just need you to get in there and hack. Just trust yourself. We saw that trust yesterday. Her bomb yesterday was unbelievable. Pull side, the fact that she can really tap into that effortless swing. And right now, Marjeko has the first Two Gators on base. Fall be in scoring position at second. Otis with the walk at first. And Skylar Wallace, who is searching for her first hit this weekend, 0 for 4. She's been walked four times over the last two days. And the reigning SEC Player of the Year wants to try to put the Gators on the board first. Nice off-speed offering from Marjeko. This is what's been interesting for Skyler. It is a storied athlete here at Florida. Has had a little bit of a rough go at it in April. Still hitless this weekend. Leads the team in hit by pitches. Second on the team in walks. And that can be tough. Tiffany, you and I talked about this actually coming into this game. And she's got 33 walks on the year, and that can be a tough mindset for a hitter like Skyler. Over to third base, Zoe Leno and Bryant can't get to it. Falby sees the ball go out of the glove, and Falby touches home. Now in a rundown with Skyler Wallace, but heads up, and the throw to home, and they're able to get Corby Otis. So good recovery from the Gamecocks defense. Meanwhile, Skylar Wallace is slow to get up at first base. This is a lot to... Yeah, so double play there. Unbelievable recovery 
from South Carolina after a little bit of a miscue. The throw unable to be handled at second by Bryant for the force out. And they're able to recover and get two. Okay, now deep exhale for Sage, <laughs> right? If you're in the circle, goodness gracious, it's the first inning, you're just trying to settle in. Now it's time to take a deep breath. And an exhale all the more because Jocelyn Erickson, you saw that graphic earlier about the impactful newcomers. She has been that the sophomore who plays behind the dish, one of the best in the country, is also the SEC leader in RBI up until this point this season. And instead of having runners on, now she has bases clear. Two outs and Sage Margeco ahead in the count, 0-2. Sage Margeco, you talked about coming in, an elite arm. The 2023 USA Today National High School Player of the Year, coming out of Lamont, Illinois. Yeah, that one-two punch between the fifth-year senior, Elena Vauder, she's the transfer from Stanford that got the start yesterday against South Carolina's win. complete game victory for Vauder and understanding that there are a few arms that we saw already this weekend for South Carolina in the event of any challenge or trouble could we see Vauder again today? That's always the question is that that recovery threshold of how quickly can an arm bounce back. You and I talked a lot about recovery, the resources now for these teams to track recovery and hydration and just fueling just the overall health of the athlete. Well, after being down the count, 0-2, Erickson walks to first base with two outs and another look here at that pitch that was called ball four. Yeah, <laughs> it's a nice break, right? The screwball that breaks away from Jocelyn Erickson, but you can see it does land in the chalk. It's a really nice hold from the sophomore. This is starting just to kind of feel similar to the outing that we saw in game one for Margeco is just struggling to establish that strike zone early. We saw four walks out of the hand of Sage. South Carolina had a collective as a staff, 10 walks and three hit by pitches, 13 free opportunities awarded to the Gators. Hard foul off there from Reagan Walsh and Julia Desiderio. Gonna take a beat after that. Right at the shoulder. Oh. That is Cameron Ellison behind home plate. Blue's okay. He's good. We're rocking and rolling. You could see, actually, that was the first time I've seen it. Desidero behind home plate. Taking off her mask. You can see the one-way communication device, that, that earpiece that's in her ear that's allowing Bev Smith to call pitches seamlessly. Beautiful off speed. If that pitch, I think, Tiff, if that pitch can show up for Margeco consistently, she's going to have some success yeah. against the Gators. This is a team that, per Bev Smith, said Florida knows the strike zone. And we've seen that consistently all weekend long, even just, I think, back to the walk of Jocelyn Erickson, that screwball that breaks away. They're not going to chase out of the zone. So where you're going to get them is in the strike zone with different speeds. Reagan Walsh tags this one into left center. And they're going to call around Erickson. They're going to hold her up at third. 
A two out double from Reagan Walsh. Such a nice swing from Walsh, who's had so much growth this season. I feel like is really starting to see the ball well. She had excellent timing yesterday against Vodder. She was able to really settle in late in counts. And that's exactly what you see there with two strikes. She's able to see the ball deep. Bat to ball. At that solo home run yesterday, back in the fourth did Reagan Walsh. And here's Ava Brown, first pitch swinging, high throw, but handled by Cummings. And that ends the inning, but not before. And not as handlebar-esque mm -hmm. like Mustache One. I'm digging it. You are an analyst of many things, Amber <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Lortizan. I mean, <laughs> you can do it all, my friend. We're trying. And thanks to our camera crew for uh, the quick recoveries on the, uh, the stash game. Well, we showed Coach Epp for South Carolina during the Open. He mm -hmm. is the, uh, the brainchild behind the mustache. He actually shaved last night. He did not have that mustache <laughs> yesterday. He had the full beard. He is now clean shaven and rocking the full stash, and I'm loving it. New hitting coach for the Gamecocks, and uh, maybe fill in a little bit. Yep, you know, to more pronounce and define because those nice stashes that we saw at the beginning of the broadcast uh, were very pronounced. So good. The walk to lead off here in the second inning as Jim Cummings is at first. Keegan Rothrock, who we mentioned, saw some action and a no decision on Friday. Three innings pitch, gave up six hits, four runs, a couple of base on balls, and a strikeout as. Kai Ricks comes in as the pinch runner. Anaya Black, who's had herself a great weekend. She's earned a stash both days, in fact, just based on the way that She's been able to swing the back because Keegan Rothrock is going to dig in here against Anaya Black. Black skirts that one in up the middle. And Kai Ricks now over at third base. So runners at the corners and still continuing her great hitting this weekend, Anaya Black. Black now with four hits on the weekend. And another pinch runner coming in. Emma Sellers will now stand at first for Black. Deanna Jones, the senior out of Surrey, British Columbia. Began her career at Minnesota, then transferred over from North Carolina. Got her exercise and sports degree already, and what you enjoy talking about with Coach Bev Smith Jones, a uh, second deb degree black belt in Taekwondo. Isn't that wild? <laughs> yeah. This one high in foul territory, and Kaluska gets it. First out of the inning recorded in Rothrock. will face off against Marissa Gonzalez. Gonzalez, who we saw Friday come up with a pinch hit. And now inserted into the lineup, the junior. 
part of that SEC All Tournament team a season ago. That rise, though, she couldn't get to. Well, when Rothrock gets ahead, offense has only been able to hit a buck 61 off of this arm when down 0 2. And I think that's consistent with any arm, right? Get ahead, find success. Mm -hmm. But it stresses based on the numbers and just what you've seen with Rothrock and her leadership and her command in the circle, if she can really set herself up to throw her best stuff, which is up in the zone. You saw the swing through there from Gonzalez. And that one pulls it foul. And just in comparing the numbers, when she gets behind 3-0, yeah, it's over four, 400 in the average. Right there in the middle, and testing and daring. And now a rundown between third and home. And they say Ricks is safe. And then Sellers all the way from first to third. So Kai Ricks taking a chance for the time being. It pays off. And it's one apiece. Another look at it here. I will be shocked. And I am shocked that this isn't going to be reviewed. Doesn't touch home and then has to go back to grab home plate. A tough angle for us there, kind of right on top of the play. But based on home plate umpire Cameron Ellison, he did not see a tag on Ricks. That's one they may take a look at again is giving Chase Bailey Goddard. That's deep enough for South Carolina to manufacture another run and take the lead here. So RBI sack fly for Marissa Gonzalez. That's a big piece of hitting right there. Understanding what the job is. That's high IQ offense for Marissa Gonzalez. Here's a good look, you're right. He had such a great vantage point right there. There's no tag apply. Yeah. Wow. The deep fly ball, the sack fly from Gonzalez hits it behind the runner deep into the field. Tip your cap. That's situational hitting right there. Desiderio hit by the pitch. So the inning continues, two outs. Now a runner aboard at first. That brings up the nine hole hitter and Brooke Blankenship. As Tim Walton watches on. His freshmen have done a really good job this season though in the circle, turning the page quickly. After any miscue. Oh, one to the shortstop, Blinkenship. Fouled off again. So two runs manufactured here in this top half of the inning for South Carolina. After no stolen bases through the first two games, they've got three here today. And that's helped them getting scoring position or push home runs. I go, I go back to the comment from Bev Smith, and she said, we are not playing our best ball yet, but don't be shocked. Don't be shocked if this weekend you see it click. We are so close. A rough start to SEC play in terms of their series, swept by Texas A&M, same with Tennessee, but they were able to notch their first SEC series win against Ole Miss, first road sweep 
in conference play since 2013 for the Gamecocks. And here they're trying to beat the Gators here at home for the first time since 1999. The one, two. Reddies. And Blankenship continuing to foul pitches off. Eighth pitch of the at bat. Right here. High for ball three, now full count. A young staff for the Gators. Young staff. Rothrock with 151 innings thrown, though, stepping into this game. It's been drinking out of a fire hose for Gator. Ball Stadium coverage begins at 9 Eastern. Back to the top with... Denver Bryan, who single to start off the game. And another base hit this time. It's going to roll. Ob Otis couldn't get to it in time. One and now two come home to score, and Bryan ends up at third base. So Denver Bryant, who has started to click late in SEC play, another look at this swing. It's her fifth hit of the weekend. The way she's seeing the ball at the plate, the patience that she's had at the plate, this isn't a big swing. Understand that. This isn't some home run style cut. It's base to base, gap to gap. And I feel like South Carolina has done such a necessary job of slowing the of walks this inning. And an additional free pass with the hit by pitch, coupled with an error as well. And this one sent to the deepest part of the park at the warning track. And Falby gets it. But it's not rocket science when you finally feel like you can take an exhale in the circle and not have to pitch from behind, pitch under pressure. Hopefully a different approach. Still a lot of game left, a lot of opportunity. And another delay and everything's all good with the gate there in right field and Kiana Jones takes her position. 7-8-9, due up here. Bailey Goddard leads it off in the home half of the second. First action of the weekend for Goddard. That one gets away from Marjeko. Flinch behind home plate. I'd have done the same thing. <laughs> net where? Net who? Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of those cuts from Goddard that even though you get a swing through as a pitcher, you're shaking in your boots a little bit. Yeah. You're you're thanking yourself that there wasn't contact made on that swing. Halfway, doesn't go around. Will be interesting to see just the management from South Carolina from a staff standpoint. We saw four different arms in game one, Sage being one of those. 
We saw Votter yesterday complete the full game win for South Carolina. So a couple different approaches from the Gamecocks. And Votter getting loose just in case. So if things go awry, she'll be ready and warmed up if needed. And a walk to lead it off as Goddard will take first. Third walk given up by Marcheco so far. Yeah, we saw four walks from her in game one. The four arms that we saw in that first game, Jory Hurd, Sage Marjeko. Differences that you will see between pitchers in Marjeko and Hurd after just about an inning plus for Sage, gave up three walks, in the seven batters she faced. What does Hurd offer more of? We'll find out after this pitch. I, I think it's command. She commands the inner part of the strike zone. So you're going to see her challenge the hands to both lefties and righties. It's a drop curve low in the zone. This is a sophomore that took it upon herself to really get after it this offseason. She's gained some velo, almost eight miles an hour, and that took place in the weight room. Again, just took the destiny of her own performance in her own hands, has really looked towards Vada as a mentor. That was something Bev Smith told us, is that there's this, this awesome connection between this staff and the leadership of Vodder as a senior. A lot of young arms pitching behind Vodder, and Jory Hurd being a sophomore that's taking a liking to that experience in AV. Sharply hit foul ball from Ariel Kowalewski. Full count for the freshman out of Richmond, Texas. See the numbers on the season with a third baseman, come up with a couple of hits this weekend, including a double back on Friday. Fouls it off and stays alive. Solid freshman campaign for Kowalewski. And right back at you to Jory Hurd. It's knocked down. Desiderio tries to make the play in time, but it throws Jen Cummings off the bag enough where Kowalewski is safe. It's right back up the middle. Enters the game and immediately gets challenged defensively. Jory Hurd un uh, unable to make the play. Entering into the outfield and right field or left field, and then boom, immediately ball gets boom. hit to you get tested. Wake up time. He wants to find you to say, That's hey, it. Did, are you ready today? The game knows. <laughs> the game knows. Emily Wilkie coming in to pinch hit in the nine hole. for Mia Williams, and so Emily Wilkie, the senior out of coming Georgia. Had a base hit in RBI in Friday's win. Showing bunt there for a strike. Now you talked about this, Aaron, in the open, the idea that 21 runners left on base yeah. this weekend. This is the second consecutive inning that we've seen the first two batters get on base for the Gators. Got the ability just to cash it in, right? You get yourselves in opportunities, but the ability to continue to push the throttle down and see it all the way to the end, all the way to home plate. Not that I'll ever second guess the decision making of Tim Walton, he's a pro, but Mia Williams, who originally hits in this nine hole, batting 500 on the weekend. Well, it pays off right Boom. here for the pinch hit from Emily Wilkie, just like she did Friday, an RBI single. And the Gators cut the lead in half. Told you, Tim Walton's a genius. <laughs> he knows exactly what he's doing. 
And sometimes that's what it is, right? The intuition of a head coach of knowing the depth you have, when to go to that depth. And Wilkie getting the call here with a three-run deficit, and she's chipping away at it. Comes off the bench, bat hot, ready to go. Snags herself in our... Now facing off against Botter. She was two for four yesterday against the game card. Gamecock's arm. So much speed with Falmy. Yeah. You saw her pound that ball into the ground back in the first inning. That high hop allows her to leg it out to first base. And sometimes it is that simple for a bat like Falby to pound the ball into the ground, allow the field to play in your favor. I think it was Blankenship at shortstop that ended up fielding that ball, and she just stood there waiting for it to drop down out of the air. And that's one area of the game that we've seen from Kendra Falby, obviously, coming from the yeah. left side, a very good slapper. But she's also worked on hitting more and just evolving in that role more as a hitter as well. Can she swing away? And she does so right there, sharply hit and line in the right field into the glove of Jones and two away. Right on cue, Tiff, yeah. yeah. She one does away. have that ability, right, to run through the box, to work the short game, but the ability to stand in and just take a hack. That was right at Jones in right field. You know, I've called a lot of Gator softball in the last three weeks, really, and it's these opportunities right here, less than two outs, mm -hmm. multiple runners on, if not in scoring position. And I just have yet to see Florida really unload the tank. And that's what we're used to yeah. with the University of Florida. We're used to that offense being able to throttle down in moments like this. And I haven't seen that consistently executed in the past three weekends. We've talked about it this weekend, 21 left on base. What's crazy is that they're still top five in terms of yes. scoring offense in so many other categories leading in the SEC. But when we talk with Tim Walton, he too was not necessarily pleased with the way they've played over the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Timely hit there from Corby Otis and bases loaded now for the Gators. They're threatening here. Otis raises her hitting streak to seven games, which ties her season high. And now that's going to bring up Skylar Wallace, a time for her to break out and break through this slump in the month of April. And no place to put her. We've seen a number of walks add up for Wallace, not seeing as many good pitches, but Vaughter's got to go right at her here. It's a fifth hit for Corby Otis. Fifth hit in eight at-bats. What she is doing at the plate right now, getting hot at the right time. But this is the bat, right? This is the bat for the Gators that's still waiting to catch fire again. Has had a pretty cool April offensively. The chop over to first base, and the double play is turned. And that ends the inning. Come out, you said this was going to be a turnaround. Don't be surprised if <laughs> you guys start to click this weekend from yesterday to today. You know, what's just been the difference from your group? Well, it, it's kind of finding the right, getting it the all the pieces to click together. And I think we've been doing that all season long. Uh, we almost ran out of mustaches yesterday. <laughs> so um, it, it's, it's a good problem to have. You want to be playing your best ball here late in the season, and I think we're starting to do that. Well, we had actually a couple mustaches delivered up to the press box. We opened with some mustaches on ourselves. You guys have such an interesting culture. You guys are able to keep it fun and lighthearted. What makes this team so special for you to coach this year? Well, I think every year it's a different group, and uh, we've been intentional about making sure the players get to know each other and that at the end of the day, you're having fun when you're on the field. So uh, uh, staying creative and, and keeping it uh, keeping it loose, I think, is important because this part of the season's a grind. And going through a conference like this, it's it can be tough. So uh, getting them to play loose and their best is the key. The question is, will we see you in a stash before the <laughs> end of the season if you haven't already? Hey, if we keep hitting them, uh, I will happily wear a mustache. I love it. I love it. Thank you for your time, Coach. Good luck. Thank you, guys.
That's the next goal. Yeah. Get a mustache on Bev Smith. Or just like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the look. Come on. It's convincing because that's exactly what they did. It is. Four home runs yesterday, and they had to pose. They do. The Polaroid ends up in the dugout. and uh, yeah. there's, there's Mustache Man yeah. himself. That's the inception of the home run stash. The pitchers get one for outstanding performances. That's right. Rich. The perfect game there we saw go. from Jory yep. Hurd earlier this season. So she got one. Some defensive changes for the Gators. Wilkie is now behind the plate as the catcher. Regan Walsh moves to second base. And Jocelyn Erickson over at first. There's Reagan Walsh there over at second. And Erickson, who is outstanding behind the plate, but Coach Walton says she may be even better yeah. as a first baseman. Well, transfer coming over from Oklahoma. You saw Jocelyn Erickson play a lot of first base for the Sooners. But boy, what a pleasure it's been to see her hold down the fort behind the dish this year. Heck of an arm. Such a leader. I have to remind myself constantly that she's such a, just a sophomore because she plays with such poise, such confidence. The one, two to Zoe Leno outside, count even. Fouled off over the net. And a souvenir for the fans in the stands. I believe Wilkie, the senior, behind the plate. Rothrock with the pitch. And Skylar Wallace was in the right position over to Erickson. And nice tandem between Wallace and Erickson, current players that were selected to USA Softball's Japan All-Star Series roster last week. They'll join UF alum Amanda Lorenz in representing USA. Lorenz will be a part of the WBSC Women's World Cup roster. So trio of Gators representing. Cummings flies out to away. Now Anaya Black at the plate. Black, who we've talked about, has had a Good weekend, seeing the ball well. Four hits. I gotta know what your pose would be. Kind of what we did in the open? A, a little bit, but like, I'm a huge Jay-Z fan. So there like you go, the, the point. Camera. I'm Gotta point it. at the camera. I'm with mm -hmm. it. And the raise of one eyebrow. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. me too. Yeah. You saw the eyebrow in the open. Yeah, that, <laughs> that would be my go-to there. If you haven't noticed, folks, we're having a lot of fun Just with a this bit. mustache Just conversation. Just a bit. <laughs> You and I, with or without mustaches, always find a way <laughs> to have a little fun. Rothrock, who is looking to find her groove, the Gamecocks who put up four runs last inning. She's looking for a one, two, three inning here. This one sent high in the right field. 
And the one, two, three, cut it in half off the Emily Wilkie RBI single. Jocelyn Erickson leads it off here. Sophomore out of Phoenix, Arizona. Gets a hold of this one into left center and not deep enough as Marissa Gonzalez collects the loud out. Gonzalez all smiles after that, but when you look at this South Carolina team, they just look like they're playing and feeling loose That's right now. That's exactly right. That's so spot on, Tiffany. I, you can just sense the energy, the smiles. There's really no panic. You don't feel like they're pressing, even when they were behind, right? There's just, there's no panic button. Reagan Wall, she was an all SEC performer last season, having another terrific follow up this year in her junior campaign. Such a mature season for Reagan Walsh. Tim Walton went on and on about that. The evolution of her style of play, of just who she is as a young woman. And I think that's a common thread as he's talked about Skylar Wallace and Corby Otis and Kowalewski, like there, there is an evolution happening, specifically offensively, of being able to just slow the game down. I can remember what that felt like too, and I don't really think it clicked for me till, I don't know, end of my junior year, early senior season, where you get off the emotional roller coaster and the results no longer affect how you play the game and the energy that you step in the box with. And we're, we're starting to see that really show up in such a strong way for Florida. That despite any of the bumps in the road, despite what the outcome may be, how Florida plays the game is how they play the game. And he admitted to us, you know, right now, school is ending next yeah. week. And, and this there's is a lot going on. There's a lot happening. Even Bev Smith alluded to it. Hey, this is a grind in the SEC week in and week out as that one bounces his way through the middle. Good piece of hitting there from Reagan Walsh. Two for two day for Walsh. That is part of that maturity of not trying to overswing, not trying and make the moment bigger than it is. Right now it's about finding ways on base mm -hmm. for, for the Gators and that's exactly what Walsh does. Punches one up the middle of the field. So going back to that conversation, Aaron, like how did you find ways to overcome the physical fatigue or the mental yeah. fatigue as you're now trying to round out conference play. Yeah, it's uh, as easy as this sounds. Resting, finding ways to rest. And this is just as much for a challenge for these coaches as it is for these players of coaches trying to build in very intentional rest. It was something that Coach Walton talked to us about too is they didn't have a midweek this week. They were on the road, they're finally back at home, and he said, you know, I think a young Tim Walton that had just started his career would have gotten back home and had very intense practices, and that is just not what this team needs right now. This team needs a breath. We did some light hitting, we focused on film, we prepped, we got after it where we needed to, but overworking this group doesn't make sense at this point in the season. But that's a good beat and pulse on your team yeah. and understanding you know, when to push and when to pull back. Yeah. Two balls and two strikes now to Ava Brown. I think that's something too the general public doesn't really see is the entire day of travel to get here. You get here and you, you practice on the field. You're gonna familiarize yourself with the playing surfaces. Then on game day, you're up early, you're eating breakfast early, you're in the training room, you're getting your body prepared, getting the uniform on, you bus over, you eat a quick lunch, then you're trying to get warmed up. I mean, it is long days, the full day of travel back home. It can be so tiring. 
Eva Brown gets on top of this one. Leno over to Bryant. They are able to turn the double play. It's about just the mental and physical fatigue of this time of the year for your group. You know, how do you rally around and, and who are you looking to to get this team lifted and motivated to try to close out with a win here? Yeah, I think it always is going to start with, uh, you know, with Skyler Wallace. Skyler's a, you know, a great player, a good leader for us. So it's going to start with her, you know, and she, she knows that. I think she's, you know, obviously working her butt off to try to get out there and, and, and stay in tune um, with the defense and communicate with our pitching staff. And, and she's done a good job. I mean, she's played really good defense, you know, all year and all weekend long. So it's going to start with her. Um, but as you talk about the mental and physical fatigue, I mean, that's part of it. And especially with a younger team at times, you know, you look on the field at a lot. we got a lot of young ones. And mm -hmm. you just have to learn how to play just a, just a tick better. I mean, and I, they're not four unearned runs, but we, you know, we, they're four unearned runs in my book. And we got to do a better job of just continuing to play, you know, not flawless, but uh, just very communicative and very clean softball and play, play as hard as you can play. Coach, I always marvel at the intuition of, of head coaches. You you had a hunch there, right, with Wilkie to bring her in for Mia Williams, and she gets the RBI. Talk about that decision to to flex the depth of your offense. Yeah, I mean, you know, thanks for, for pointing out a positive. <laughs> um, you know, the key is Mia's, Mia's a good ball player for us, and, and offensively she hasn't been as consistent as we want. And Emily had a good at-bat yesterday or the day before, and, and we just went to a little bit more of an offensive approach here. And, you know, Emily has an option there. She can bunt or hit. She obviously uh, didn't fake the bunt, but went for the bunt, brought the infield in, was able to hit it past her. So give her credit for getting her job yeah. done again. Awesome. Appreciate the Thank time, you. coach. Thanks, guys. Go Gators. You know, that's just what comes along with the process. Hey, look, Skylar Wallace is not the Skylar Wallace that we've seen all season long, and yet she's still finding ways to compete. And he recognizes that because yeah. there is just a standard that has been set here at Florida. And even though one area of the game isn't necessarily working, you know, he made sure to point out just the vocal leadership that Skylar Wallace has shown along with the action and the way she's played on the field. And that is a, that sends a message to your group on how you're able to respond in spite of things not necessarily going your way. Yeah, and even, you know, back to just separating the emotional side of this game versus outcomes, even when Skylar Wallace isn't her absolute best, she still has an impact on this group, right? The presence, her vocality on the field, her ability to lead. There's always a role. And you heard him speak to just some of the miscues and mistakes. He's like, hey, look, I'll be honest with you. There are more mistakes that yeah. I've seen on the field than, than I'm used to. But that's also helped them to have great success over his tenure in terms of the number of SEC regular season and tournament titles we mentioned already. The two national championships over the head of Corby Otis and Kiana Jones is going for two. She slides in safely. So Jones leads it off here with a double in the top of the fourth. This is just straight up smoked. She gets every ounce of this ball. This is a pitch right down the middle of the strike zone. A missed spot there for Rothrock and burns Corby Otis in left field. We've got Wilkie now behind the plate. I want you to look at where this location is. This is right at the knees, a drop curve. Gonzalez showing bunt there, but doesn't get the call. Gonzalez lays down the bunt, and Rothrock elects to let Kowalewski take that one. So one of those miscues there, she could have charged in, but the freshman instead Allowed the third baseman freshman to do it. Yeah, this is just communication. You can see that Rothrock had this ball all the way, and it appears either that Kamalewski called her off or Rothrock just got timid. And No outs, runners at the corners. Let's focus on the next ahead. Julia Desiderio, the junior catcher who was hit by the pitch her last time. First pitch swing in past the outstretched arms of Kamalewski and the RBI single for Desiderio.
It just feels like the pace of this game is in full control of South Carolina right now. Things are moving quickly, offensively, for the Gamecocks. It just feels in flow. They're not swinging out of the zone. Season and coming in relief for the freshman Keegan Rothrock. With Blankenship lays down the sack bunt, advances the runners. And the first out of the inning. And Wooten's typically a midweek starter for this group. A grad transfer, going to keep the ball low in the zone, drop arm, challenges the knees. You know what makes her so deadly, though, is the fact that she can clock at four speeds. So she's got the hard drop, the off-speed drop. You can see it there, the spin of that ball. Already hard enough to clock two movements, throw in an extra two, and you've got your work cut out for you. Back to the top of the order with Denver Bryant. I'll tell you, since that 11-1 advantage the Gators had back in that first game, South Carolina has gone on to score and outscore Florida 16-4 up until this point. They grabbed game two, upset the 10th ranked team yesterday and are now closing in on an opportunity to try to grab this series from the Gators for the first time since 99. Three balls, no strikes to Denver Bryan and a four ball walk to load the bases. Tim Walton really liked the way Mackenzie Wooten was able to get strikes and outs last weekend against Mizzou. First series that the Gators dropped this season. And trying not to make it two in a row with bases loaded, Riley Blampede. 0 for 2 today. Blampede swings away and fouls it back. She's the Gamecocks RBI leader on the season with 29. Yeah, heck of a bat for South Carolina. Heavily recruited. Was recruited by Alabama, Florida State. Just a stud both offensively and defensively. A lot of confidence that Riley Blampede plays with. You know, she challenged herself this season and sharing it with head coach Bev Smith this year, she just wanted to play free. She wanted to take the pressure off herself, play completely filled with joy. No restrictions, no pressure. Shallow hit and going to chase is the shortstop Skylar Wallace who collects the all important second out of the inning. Every isn't that what great athletes do? That's it. They make things look, look so easy. easy and effortless. Skylar Wallace has been doing that throughout her fantastic career. All-American and FCA Player of the Year, along with SEC Player of the Year season ago. Fouled off by Zoe Leno. Fouled off again, now one and two. The pitch. On the outside part of the plate, she did not go around according to Destiny Robinson, the third base umpire. 
And we'll get to see if this barrel breaks. That looks like it does. I think that's a missed call right there. It was also a stellar pitch from Wooten, a screwball that breaks away from Leno. This one put in the play, and Otis catches it on the run. And Wooten comes in. in. Double plays. They created some separation with their three today. But this is a Florida Gator team who we've talked about can put up a lot of runs. Among the best in the SEC in a number of offensive areas. And they also protect home well. 18 and four here at KDC Show Presley Stadium this season. And they haven't lost back-to-back -back games all season long. Tim Walton knows what his group is capable of as Bailey Goddard takes a look at a strike, two and one to the fifth year senior out of Orange Park, Florida. And up the middle, base hit for Bailey Goddard. Champs. We'll see if that single for Goddard can spark a rally from the Gators. Kowalewski got a single off of Jory Hurd back in the second. First time this afternoon facing off against Vauder. Talk about the ability to recover quickly through an entire game win yesterday. She gets a hold of this one, and you see the flag waving. She hit it near the flagpole. A two-run shot for Kowalewski. Gators within one. You know, on the flip side of seeing an arm for the second time, they faced her for seven innings yesterday, and what that does is inform them on the approach in day three. And right there, Kowalewski with a runner on makes them pay dead center field. She knew exactly what she wanted. She fished it, and she caught it. Eight for 14 today are the Gators. Emily Wilkie at the plate, hoping to get that juice that Kowalewski just had. Half a dozen home runs on the season for the freshman. And Wilkie, who had that RBI single back in the second to help cut the lead at, in half at the time. You asked Coach Walton about just the decision to bring Emily Wilkie in, having that, that feeling, that, that gut feeling. It paid off in a major way as you see him still in the air and communicating with the Gators leader, Skylar Wallace. Both of our questions, right? You yeah. asked about the adjustment that needed to be made and he referenced Skylar Wallace. And I, I nod to the intuition that he had as a head coach to go to the depth of the bench and call on Wilkie, who now stands in the batter's box, was successful in her first pinch hit at bat of this game, an RBI single. 
and she stays in. And that was a, a quote that I wrote down and highlighted in my notes from an offensive perspective. The approach of Tim Walton is if you hit, you play. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can make my job very tough as a head ball club because I am struggling to figure out who gets that opportunity. When everybody can hit, how do you make those choices? He's had so many good hitters throughout the history of this program. Kendra Falby falls into that category. Water, who was inserted in this game back in the second inning, the first batter she faced was Kendra Falby, who lined out to right. Yesterday, she was able to pick up a couple of singles off the Gamecocks hurler. Swing it away and golfs it in the center field. Kendra Falby takes second base. Emily Wilkie rounding third. It's a tie ball game. Big time hits for big time players. And Kendra Falby evens up this game. Speed is so deadly. Speed is so deadly. And for Kendra Falby, she continues to put pressure on this defense. Tiffany, you mentioned early this game the fact that Kendra Falby has been working on the ability to stand in and take a hack. And that's exactly what she does in this opportunity. She knew that's what this offense needed at this moment. The RBI triple for Kendra Falby. And it's reignited. Corby Otis, who's had four RBI on the weekend, had herself a very good series against South Carolina. Walked her first time up, singled off of water back in the second. Five for eight so far on the weekend, seeing the ball so well. And this one, great play by Blankenship over at shortstop. And Corby Otis is safe. Three multi-hit games this weekend for Otis. A little bit of a slow call there from Lyndon Baptiste. First base umpire, what a grab from Blankenship. And that is the right call. Corby Otis legging that ball out for another base hit, a two for two days so far and a walk. Unbelievable. A great effort there by Blankenship to stop it, has to throw from her knees. And Skylar Wallace back up to the plate. We've seen now multiple conversations mm -hmm. with Tim Walton and Skylar Wallace. She's had a bit of a cooled off April from what we typically see from her at the plate. But beyond that, this entire season with runners in scoring position, she bats 513 on the year. This is still who you want at the plate in this type of opportunity. Coach Walton knows the incredible energy and passion that Skylar Wallace plays with in addition to her terrific talent and skill. 33 walks on the air, still a patient eye at the plate. A 450 hitter with two strikes. So still a threat posed here to Vodder in the circle. Two balls and two strikes to Skylar Wallace. Saps that one over to first base and three double plays that Skylar Wallace has hit into, but Holy. she connected with that one. It was just that Jen Cummings was at the right place at the right time. Man, 
you could feel the energy. You could feel this, guys, in the stadium that there was a bomb about to go off. Skylar Wallace's bat, and this is right into the glove of Jen Cummings at first base. What are the odds? Yeah. What are the odds? Unfortunate for Wallace, but a great swing that we saw from her, and she connected well on that into the glove of Cummings, but wow, wow. Looking at my scorecard, it's like, how many times do you see somebody hit into a double play three times? <laughs> Beautiful change up by Vodder, and how, how well Vodder has done under pressure situations this, this game, getting out of a bases loaded situation couple scoring opportunities. She got a one, two, three inning back in the third. She's just really confident, even in the midst of pressure. Well, she found herself in a number of pressure situations last year yeah. in the Women's College World Series. And so that's the type of experience that she brings over to this South Carolina team that's going to help anchor them if they want to make a deep run. Jocelyn Erickson, SEC leader in RBI, adds to it and gives the Gators the lead. They grab it back, first lead of the game for the Gators since the opening inning. You know what, Tiffany? You can look back at an at-bat like Skylar Wallace, the line drive double play, and take that energy one of two ways. It can be deflating or it can be encouraging. And I refuse to believe that Jocelyn Erickson didn't step into that same side of the box and take confidence seeing the hard hit shot from Skylar Wallace. Leads the SEC in RBI and gets it done with two outs on the board. Timely hit by Jocelyn Erickson, who just brings a fearless mentality to this team. You start to ask yourself, too, if it's not Vodder in the circle, where else right now would South Carolina go? We saw Bailey Bimball pitch two innings in game one. Reagan Bennett, an inning and a third. We've already seen Hurd in the circle and Margetko. So only two more arms that we could tentatively see come out of the pen here for the Gamecocks. If you're Bev Smith, you understand that Elena Vauder obviously gives you yeah. your best opportunity against the Gators. You know, thinking back, Tiffany, to the tail end of yesterday's win for South Carolina, we started to see Vodder lose a little bit of steam. Couple of back-to-back -back walks, that crazy double play to end the game. Sharply hit the third base, Zoe Leno over to Cummings, and that Mackenzie Wooten trying to keep South Carolina at bay. But pitching with the lead, we've talked about how just the momentum shifts and swings. Aaron, you point out that, hey, look, it's a it's a game of momentum, it is. right? And yeah. so the Gators have now grabbed it back. Time is called as a Ball may have rolled on from the South Carolina dugout. Or oh, the bullpen gate was open, being told. Jen Cummings, the senior out of Redmond, Washington. And 
Schreiber had that solo home run back in the second yesterday to get the Gamecocks going to help even up the series. She's walked today, flying out to left in her last at bat. This one, Skylar Wallace is going to get it to it. Right on the grass and one down. Well, it's going to be a fun couple of weeks to close out SEC play. As Tennessee, Texas A&M was having themselves a great season. Trisha Ford has done an excellent job with the Aggies. Trinity Cannon was awarded with the SEC Weekly Honor. Emily Kennedy, a pitcher in the circle for the Aggies. But you've got Tennessee, Texas A&M, Florida, Arkansas at the top as the Razorbacks drop game two to Alabama, so the rubber match coming up later today. And Anaya Black with another base hit. Boy, she's got a couple of hits today, but throughout this weekend, she's seen the ball well. Between her and Corby Otis, just red hot this weekend. The leaders offensively for both of these teams. There's Corby in left field for the Gators. That one gets past Emily Wilkie and so Anaya Black advances the second base on the wild pitch. Well, that's the tying run now in scoring position. A less than two out opportunity here for Kiana Jones. Sharply hit over to Kowalewski. Strong throw to third. Black trying to take third and is able to advance on the throw. So now she's 60 feet from home. Man, the aggressiveness we've seen from the Gamecocks, specifically between second and third base, has been pretty impressive. We saw Denver Bryant get caught at third base, tagging up on a fly ball out to Corby Otis in left field, and this one across the diamond, but Nia Black safe. And that one pulled down the third baseline, and Marissa Gonzalez with a game-tying RBI double. Where Gonzalez has had herself a day, a couple of hits, second run driven in today. She had an RBI sack fly back in the second, and this one bringing home black. It's the fundamentals of Gonzalez today that's been so impressive to me. The fact that she's not over-swinging, she's not trying to make the moment or the opportunity something that it isn't. We saw the sacrifice fly behind the runner back in the second inning, a single in the fourth, and right here, she just needed to punch the ball through the infield, and that's what she does. To the Desiderio. He put up the fifth run of the game off of her RBI single last inning. Solidly hit in the center field. Falby is there, but not before. As the 10th ranked Gators try not to drop back to back games for the first time this season. They have controlled this series against South Carolina over the years. You got to go back to 1999 when South Carolina last won a three game series here in Gainesville. For Brown, 0 for 2 today. Outstanding athlete. 
We saw her start the game in the circle. Came up short. And can also play in the infield, bats away. And one of those fresh faces for Tim Walton that you expect to just grow her game over her years here under his leadership. Yeah, pitcher versus pitcher here. I, I refuse, I was not a pitcher, but I refuse to believe mm. that being a pitcher doesn't give you a com competitive edge as a, as a hitter as well. The fact that she can stand in with the knowledge of also having experience in the circle. Bodes are well right there. First base hit of the game for Ava Brown. Struck well through the five, six hole. And you said it earlier, Aaron, even going back to yesterday's game, and we've seen since Botter has thrown against a few batters that Florida has figured it out. They're swinging the ball better. Yeah. They're making greater contact, and they've had success. And obviously, they've tied up the ball game, and now Brooke Barnard comes in as the pinch runner. Well, they faced Vodder for an entire seven innings yesterday, and the only thing you can hope if you're Tim Walton is that despite the loss yesterday, that that experience and those reps against the arm of AV in the circle allows you to be more informed here in game through game three, the rubber match where it's it's for all the marbles. Bailey Goddard, who wanted to move Barnett over via the sack butt, but with two strikes, swinging away. Protected the plate, she singled her last time up. The pitch comes in tight and caught looking frozen there on the inside part of the plate. And Goddard is retired. It's the first K of the game. Vodder catching some heat on the inner corner. She challenged that side of the plate twice against Goddard and never got the bite, but got the call to sit her down. Muriel Kowalewski readies two for two today. And remember, a timely one as well. That's what got the juice flowing there in the fourth inning for the Gators. And you know, I, I said this earlier, I've, in now three weeks covering Florida, I've yet to really see them kind of open the floodgates. And Last inning was the first time I finally started to feel like that Gator offense that we know and love started to show up. This one softly hit, tailing back into the field. Nine straight home runs with Florida's two-way player, Jack Haglione, ending yesterday as they were able to salvage a win against Vandy. Emily Wilkie, wide to the glove of a jumping Zoe Leno at third base to end the inning. The line out to third off the bat delays. Mm -hmm. I think Auburn had a little bit of rain roll through. We've been lucky. This uh, Gainesville has been known to be coined as Rainsville every now and then, so. You bought the sunshine. <laughs> I brought that's, the sunshine, that's, that's exactly right. Katie Kistler, who's inserted in the right field, you saw just a moment ago. And Brooke Blankenship, the shortstop for the Gamecocks, 
leading it off here in the top of the sixth. Softly hit, and Blinkenship is retired. You know who brought the sunshine is your dad. <laughs> oh. Your dad, Papa Green in the house. Appreciate that. You he know? Has, he has to take his annual pilgrimage. I love it. To Gainesville with me. We what travel together each what a for a game each season. So. so fun to meet him. That was yeah. my first time to get to meet him. And you guys are quite the duo. You guys are quite the duo. I'm a daddy's girl. Through and through. Thanks for that. Of course. And you guys are close. You're a Tampa gal, so you're not far. Yeah. Well, Mackenzie Wooten just pitched two and a third inning, just giving up two hits, only one run. Came in relief for Keegan Rothrock who started off this game. Denver Bryant sends this one flying into right. Katie Kistler all the way back to the wall and makes the grab. No one home field. Katie Kistler is a regular out there and well played tracking that all the way. Well, five hits on the weekend for Denver Bryant. This outfield knew they were gonna see some action. Never say die is Goddard in right field. Look at that. The advantage of being on your home turf. She knew exactly where her body was in space. She approaches the warning track, finds the wall, and robs the go-ahead home run. <laughs> and didn't we just mention she was just inserted into the ball game this inning? The game knows, Tiffany Green. The game knows. The readiness of kick forth 180 degrees to figure out the best angle to catch that ball. She never gave up on it. No. Off speed offering from Wooten into Blampede. Grounded foul. And Blampede lays into this one a long and deep line. Leno with a great grab. The line out to end the Gators inning back in the fifth. But now this is the part of the order that you want up for Florida. Kendra Falby, who tripled, scored a run to even things up. Back in the fourth at five apiece. We saw her with the RBI triple that changed the course of this game entirely back in the fourth inning. I knew she was fast home to first until I saw her like a gazelle speed <laughs> up as she rounded second into a triple. They're playing in just because of that speed and Falby, the slapper, is retired. Well, this is the bat to look out for. You know, we were warned about it coming into this weekend from Coach Tim Walton, said that Corby Otis is without a doubt one of the most impactful bats on this team. The team just rallies around her. So funny, so smart, quirky in the best way, but the hardest worker on this team. She's so prepared, just easy to coach, trust her stuff, and it showed up this weekend. And it's really been there throughout conference play. She's leading the team with a 431 average. She's knocked in 15 runs in the process coming into today's game. She's only up that number with a couple of singles. She's seen the ball so well, but you said something so important with all of her talent, very coachable. Mm.
And when you're trying to make those adjustments or leaps from going good to great or greater, it takes being able to receive information and coaching. Kobe, Corby Otis is doing that. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting evolution, and I think Corby Otis is a perfect example of it. Being a good athlete maybe means to get to great, I need more prep, and I need a little bit more time in the cage, and I need to make more adjustments. But the difference from great to elite isn't always more prep. And that was the challenge from Tim Walton to Corby Otis, is that quit overworking or overcomplicating your talent. You've done enough prep. You've done the thing. Now I need you to lean back into it and just trust yourself. And that's finally what we're seeing from Corby Otis, is just the exhale, just the trust. You and I were just having a conversation, Aaron, during the break just about Skylar Wallace and maybe that exhale after that last AB because hitless yeah. on the weekend remained cool in the month of April, but a player and a batter in this lineup that you just feel is due for the Gators. The presence is always there, right? No matter what's happened in the game, no matter if she's 0 for 4 or 4 for 4, the presence is there. She's a bat you're always going to fear. And thinking back to that line drive double play back in the fourth inning, I the scorecard doesn't show it, but that was a spark offensively for this team. It was so hard hit. And then the very next play, Jocelyn Erickson comes up with an RBI single, and they tie the ball game. Can you use the word spark, though? Yeah. I'm going to ask you, as Skyler Wallace sends it in to left field for the loud out, the second one of the inning. But why did you say spark? I think it's synonymous with momentum, right? You're looking for any type of energy that you can rally around. And we've already seen, one, Tim Walton answer a question you had back in the fourth inning about what it would take for this team to kind of turn the tide and take the lead. And he mentioned Skylar Wallace. We saw him have a conversation with her defensively. We saw him have a conversation with her in the dugout offensively. And that's because she has a role on this team to be a leader and to create some type of momentum, whether it's with her, her voice, her presence, her bat, whatever it is, in that moment in the fourth inning, her spark was hard contact. Erickson, who has done a great job in a spark plug here, the play at the plate, and that is the go-ahead run for the Gators. Jocelyn Erickson keeps on producing. You know who's had the blowtorch today? <laughs> Jocelyn Erickson has had the blowtorch. Unreal. Sophomore lefty transfer coming over from Oklahoma. We've seen her catch. Now we've seen her at first base. No matter where she is on the field, don't care because she can get it done offensively. And what I had highlighted in my notes from Tim Walton, if you hit, you play. Mm -hmm. Well, Jocelyn Erickson, the RBI single, advances to second base on the throw. Corby Otis was sent around, and Tim Walton was pumped up after she scored that go-ahead run. Reagan Walsh looking to tack on a little bit more insurance. The ground ball, though. Going right at her. Zoe Leno has been red hot this series as well. And Ava Brown's going to challenge low in the zone. Curve drop, the off speed curve as well. A change up, a true three speed arm. And she looked very sharp yesterday. Despite being a freshman, she does not pitch with any fear. That one line in the center field, one down. Well, if you're 
looking at this from a South Carolina perspective, you had Zoe Leno, Jen Cummings, and Anaya Black all hit home runs off of Ava Brown yesterday. So an important out there for the Gators. Bev Smith hopes that Jen Cummings and Anaya Black may have something left in their power tank. Jen Cummings with the deep single. Cummings, her first hit of the game. Well, Nanaya Black has the ability to change the course of this ball game with one cut. Two home runs already on the weekend, a two for three days so far here in the rubber match. Been impressed with her ability to track the ball in the strike zone. Her timing has been impeccable all weekend. She stays in the lower body with so much power and consistency. Beth Smith adds a little bit more speed on the base pass with Bree Warren coming on as the pinch runner. Good job by Wilkie to handle that one. He's low and in the dirt. pair of two run homers for Black in the first two games against the Gators and keeping it low in the dirt for Black as Emily Wilkie handles it once again and Chelsea Dobbins back hook yard that second home run was off Ava Brown a drop ball low in the zone she went yard on two entirely different pitches Where do you go against a hitter like that? Where do you go? Take it all the way in there for a strike from Brown. The pitch on the way. And they walk black. So now two on, one out here for Kiana Jones. Jones's lone hit of the day, a double back in the third. Would later come around to score. On an RBI single from Julia Desiderio. That one fouled off of Jones. Gonna try to walk that off. And calls time. Well, Kevin McGuire, the third base. Coach, and the McGuire name has been a very familiar one amongst Gamecocks fans as his daughter Kinsey played at South Carolina. Six seasons <laughs> she was at South Carolina. The ongoing joke that a McGuire always has to be around Coach Bev Smith. He's been there for, he was there for half of them and is and stay on the staff. The flip over from Wallace to get the lead runner at third. Heads up play by the shortstop. Makes the right one. And now South Carolina down to their final out. So well executed. Just the shovel across the body from Skylar Wallace. They reinforce this every time, but some of these plays you guys are watching are not easy to make, and she makes it look routine. 
And in the process, Bev Smith calls upon another pinch runner. It's the freshman, Carly Shelton, who's now the game tying run for the Gamecocks. Marissa Gonzalez, who is Swung the bat well. Had an RBI sack fly back in the second. Bunt single in the fourth, and then that RBI double to tie up this ball game at six all. In the top half of the fifth. Hangs out there, gets it, and that ends the ball game. The Gators hold on. They grabbed the series.